Hi, welcome to Straight Talk. As you know, we're trying to educate the public about the opiate epidemic, about the drug problems out there. We try to give you solutions, programs, education, awareness. It's critical. We all have to work together on this. So we have a special program today because I want to educate you both about some treatment and also about what can be done in our communities. And joining me is Matt Bell, who's CEO of the Midwest Detox and Recovery Center. It's in Ohio, mm -hmm. right? Yes. In Ohio. And he does great work in treatment and education. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. This is part of Amethyst Health, which is a huge organization. They got programs all over the place. Yep. And you're in Ohio. We're in Ohio. So we're in Northwest Ohio. It's, Northwest. A, it's a Lucas County city called Toledo. Terrific. Yeah, sure. Toledo, Ohio. Yeah. Definitely. Matt, before we get into the great work, you're working in the schools, you're doing amazing stuff. I want, the, I want my audience to know about detox. Mm -hmm. I get so many questions. You know, what is detox? What, what do you mean detox? What mm -hmm. is, do they have to go into a hospital? Do they have to... Explain a little bit about when someone's using... When do they need detox, and mm -hmm. what do you offer at, at your particular program at uh, Midwest? Sure. That's a great question, and, and I think it's important to talk about it. Uh, detox is an essential step, especially with the drugs that individuals are using nowadays, and, and alcohol included, because alcohol is a drug. Um, if, if we don't detox appropriately first for the appropriate amount of time, we're spinning our wheels in the mud. If we just want to go to outpatient therapy, without getting the drugs out of the system first, we're setting someone up for failure. You're not even feeling physically good enough to go sit in a group room and focus or sit across from a therapist and be honest enough to talk about why we're doing the things that we're doing and how we cannot do those things ever again. So, so detox is an integral part of the process. And it's hard to do, uh, you know, getting the right building, finding the munis municipality that'll let it happen, having the right zoning, and then building a team that understands that. Uh, the biggest goal for us when we have patients in detox is to keep them comfortable. So there's not too much clinical programming that happens in a detox level of care. We really want individuals to be comfortable long enough so they can get to that next level of care where a lot of the clinical programming starts. Not to say that there's not stuff that happens uh, in a detox level of care, but it's mostly medical. It's keeping you comfortable enough, curbing those withdrawal symptoms, which with alcohol or with benzodiazepines or with opioids are extremely uncomfortable. Um, with alcohol and benzodiazepines specifically, there is a risk of death, there's a risk of seizing, and, and with opioids, you feel like you're going to die. Um, but again, keeping someone safe, keeping vital signs within normal limits, and keeping, keeping the patient comfortable is our main primary goal in a detox level of care that typically lasts for five to seven days. And this is residential, this piece. Absolutely. So five to seven days, drugs get out of their system. Yes. You know, and yep. you help them, and like you said, make them comfortable. Yes. But they've got to get that five days or whatever it takes to get that drug mm -hmm. out of their system. Yep. Because yep. if they don't, they're going to end up pr probably running back out on the street. Absolutely. The, the withdrawal symptoms, again, even after seven days, I would love to be able to say that there's a 14-day detox program out there. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that come into play to make that difficult to do. But uh, even after those seven days, you're not feeling all the way physically well yet. There's some post-acute withdrawal symptoms, especially, again, with the drugs that are out there nowadays, that just linger around. And, and, and addicts and alcoholics, we want what we want when we want it. We want to feel better now. And again, people come into treatment because they want a life. They want normalcy. And we think that that happens quickly. We want to go back to life and, 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 and be a, a parent or a, or a businessman or a student or whatever it is. And that's the goal. And that's awesome. And it's very, very possible. But it takes a little bit of time. So detox is the first step. Uh, it's so important. And, and then it's important to have a warm handoff straight into the next level of care with no gap. Yeah. And I, you know, you bring up a good point where people Oh, I'm going to drop them off. <laughs> and I think where that 30-day mm -hmm. notion came. Oh, I'm going to have 28-day programs. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to drop them off. We'll pick them up in a month. Sure. <laughs> Make them better. Right. Make them well. Right. You know, it's just not that easy. If it was that easy, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Now, outpatient detox, does that exist? It or, does. Or, it's it just does. not as effective as... Well, I wouldn't say it's not effective. I think that anything can be effective for the right person. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's 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 a very very specific program for for individuals that that need that can't commit to stopping their life and going inpatient for seven days. Some people just can't do it. Some people are raising families. Some people have children. Some people have jobs where they can't go away for seven days. So outpatient detox can be utilized if done the right way. Yeah, it's, it's very, very important. And, and there really aren't that many specialized detox centers. Mm -hmm. Sounds like hospitals used to try to do it, mm -hmm. but it sounds like what you're doing at Midwest is, is to have a real special yeah. program with qualified people that know what they're doing mm -hmm. to help. But that transition to the next step is critical. Of course. Obviously. Of course. And we're so blessed. We have an amazing team of, of doctors, therapists, psychiatrists, nurses that have been around for, for a long time and have wonderful reputations. And to have Amidus as, as kind of the overseer of all that to make sure that they're taking care of the back end of things so that we can really, really focus on patient care and satisfaction. Um, and, and our outcomes and measurables are, are beyond where we ever thought that they would be. Yeah. Now we've, you know, everyone out there is familiar now with fentanyl. Mm. I mean, this is something no one ever heard of a couple of years ago. Right. And now we see a lot of cocaine coming back yep. and certainly the opiates and mm -hmm. all that. It's kind of like a, a mix of a lot of things going on out there with people. I mean, it's almost like you don't find anyone that did, does one drug anymore. <laughs> you really don't. Um, cross addicted is, is, a, is a huge population mm. of patients that come in. Dual diagnosis, not just with, a, with an SUD diagnosis, which is substance use, but also a mental health diagnosis. Uh, last month, we actually had more people coming in abusing alcohol than we did opioids. So uh, they were very close, but uh, it was more alcohol. Um, and, and we're actually starting to see a lot of crystal meth in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of indiv individuals coming in seeking treatment for crystal meth. Yeah, that does sound, I'm hearing like cocaine and meth. Maybe the, the, the people uppers. that did fentanyl are tired of it and now they're looking to go up instead of down. I don't but know. It's, it's pretty crazy. Well, Matt, uh, thanks for being here to get us started. Sure. Uh, we're gonna stick with you coming back and we're gonna talk about the work you're doing in the schools. We're talking to Matt Bell, CEO of Midwest uh, Detox and Recovery Center. It's in uh, Ohio. What was the city? Toledo, Ohio. Home of the Mountains. Toledo, Ohio. Part of the Amidus Health Network of Programs. We're going to come back and talk to Matt about some of the work he's doing in the school. So stay with us. We're coming right back to Straight Talk. Who helps a hero? Who tells the story of their scars? The freedom and safety of so many of us all is earned by the sacrifices of so few. Who helps a hero? We all do. The Gary Sinise Foundation works to support America's defenders and strengthen their families through entertainment, the construction of smart homes for our wounded heroes, and by inspiring and educating others to also support the veterans within their own communities. We enjoy the benefits of their sacrifice and service each day. Now it's time we serve them. Find out how you can help our heroes at GarySiniseFoundation.org. While we can never do enough to show our gratitude to our nation's defenders, we can always do a little more. calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. Our whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Next. Hi, welcome back to Straight Talk. We're talking about 
the opiate epidemic, we're talking about the drug problem, the marijuana problem, everything going on in our communities that are impacting our kids, our families, our neighborhoods, our cities, our counties. It's a terrible problem that we have to deal with on all different levels. And we're being joined by Matt Bell, who's the CEO of the Midwest Detox and Recovery Center uh, in Ohio. And not only is he doing great treatment work, but he's also, and he also understands how important it is to work in the community. And let, let's talk about what you're doing in the education, the prevention, mm -hmm. the community part of it. Why, you're, you run a treatment center. Why even go out and do prevention and education? What's that all about? Well, honestly, I think the biggest success for our treatment center would be the day that we have to close our treatment center because we don't have people coming in that need treatment. And I, and I think that that starts with prevention and education and just healthy communication because you don't see a lot of it. You don't see enough of it nowadays, at least. Um, this epidemic and the trend of drugs being used in our country is so multifaceted and it's and it's aggressive nowadays and we have to be multifaceted and aggressive and adjust and, and be flexible with it as well uh, and part of that is 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 not just being in the treatment centers we have to get out there and and talk to our future which is young adults and and kids you know we spoke to a hundred thousand students last year in in the northwest ohio southeast michigan area and uh, um you would just be shocked how many kids just don't know the dangers of, of, of drugs and alcohol or they don't think that alcohol is dangerous or they don't think that marijuana can be dangerous or they don't even know what prescription pain pills are. Um, and, and, and the most important thing is it doesn't start with those things. And I can speak for that from myself and my own experiences. When I go in there, I don't dress like this. I go into schools and I, and I dress like like I would if I was in high school. Uh, and, I, and that relatability of seeing someone up there on a stage talking, not at you, but talking to you because he's been through the same thing that you've been through, that relatability is extremely powerful and impactful. So, um, you know, saying that my first addiction was your approval and I was willing to do other things that I knew I shouldn't do, whether it's vaping or smoking cigarettes or something that people really think is just silly. But it's not. It's, it opens that floodgate and that, and that uh, it enables a snowball chain of events uh, uh, to happen. And, and that's my story. And I see it all too often nowadays. You know, if you ask any of the addicts in my treatment center right now, what was the first drug that you did? They would all say alcohol or marijuana. Not to say that somebody that smokes marijuana or drinks alcohol is going to become a heroin right. addict. But you can't argue with, with numbers and statistics like that. So it, it is, there's a gateway theory that's there and you can't argue with it. And, and the safest thing to do is just don't do it. it. You don't have to do it. You don't need other people's approval to be okay. So you put together, and you said you spoke to 100,000 kids. I mean, you had to go out there and go to the school systems and go and get credibility and go in and talk. And, mm -hmm. and the fact that you, you found out that, mo that so many of these kids really don't have accurate information mm -hmm. about what's going on. They mm -hmm. think marijuana is the greatest thing in the world mm -hmm. and that you can't get addicted and, and they hear that from their parents mm -hmm. or from society who wants to legalize drugs. I mean, they hear a lot of mixed messages, don't they? Absolutely, and we were kind of talking about it during the break and, and how impressionable our youth are nowadays. And again, I think that that's just our, our, our country, but we're always looking up to someone and, and if we don't have someone healthy and, and positive to look up to, we're going to look up to anybody that we can. And, and, you know, we're looking up to rappers that are talking about, you turn on the most common radio station right now, and there will be a song talking about some sort of drug or alcohol. You, you, you drive down the highway right now, and there will be a billboard that has alcohol on it. And, and our kids think that that is how you socialize and that is how you have fun. And, then, and, and soon they're going to have marijuana dispensaries on every corner. They will. They will. That we know that's coming at some will. point. It's coming. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not a medical person. I can't say that that is or isn't for somebody. But again, it's just those, those concepts and those ideals that we put out there. And our kids think it's okay. And, then, and if I can get away with this and I can do this, then I'm going to go to the next step up. And it's, uh, again, I can speak for myself that that's how I got. I, I wasn't raised to do the things that I ended up doing in, in my adult life. And um, if I would have just never picked up 
alcohol and marijuana when I was 14 years old, I don't think, I, I wouldn't even be here talking to you today. I'm, I'm grateful that I am, and I'm grateful that I found a way out, uh, but I don't want to see other kids go down the road that I went down. Yeah, yeah. So when you go out and you talk, um, any grade, you talk to, I mean, you try to get into the school and talk directly to the kids. What about the parents? That's so important. That's a great question, yeah. Mike. You know, we, we spoke mostly to high schoolers. Um, there were some middle schools and junior highs that brought us in. The lowest grade that we talked to was third grade. Now, obviously every audience is different and therefore our message will be different. We don't go in there and tell war stories. The, the common denominator in all of our presentation is there's consequences with all of your choices. Good choices bring on good consequences and poor choices bring on poor consequences. Uh, and not only do they affect us, but they affect our loved ones and they affect other people. Um, but there's two constants in addiction or in pre-addiction. There's the individual and their families. So not just treating the individual, but also talking to the family members to inform and educate. Uh, we always offer to come in for a follow-up presentation to talk to the families. We always offer to come up for a follow-up presentation if the students during that presentation didn't have an opportunity to ask a question because it was on such a large format and they weren't comfortable saying right. it amongst their peers. We want to come back and sit kind of on an informal setting, maybe during lunch, and we're there for, for lunch period and you can come and sit and talk to us. And, and again, we're not there to, the message isn't, we're here to save you. The message is, if you're struggling with something, I don't care what it is. It doesn't necessarily have to be about drugs and alcohol. You can change it. You right. can change it today. And, and, and most of the time, you need to ask for help, right. and that's okay. And there are people that are there to help you. There are and always people important. there to help. All right, we're going to keep talking about this because it's important. Talk about education and prevention. For those of you watching, we're talking to Matt Bell. He's CEO of the Midwest Detox and Recovery Center. It's an Amethyst Health Network treatment program in Ohio. But what Matt is doing is not just treatment, but he's working in the community. Wherever you're watching this show, if you've got treatment centers, you've got a health department, school system, make sure they're teaching our kids the best and they get good speakers, good programs, good curriculum uh, to help educate. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and talk a little more with uh, Matt Bell. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Find fun activities to do, like boating and biking, or camping and hiking, plus much more. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. Hi, welcome back to Straight Talk. We're talking with Matt Bell. He's the CEO of the Midwest Detox and Recovery Center in Ohio. He does amazing work in treatment, and we're learning more about working in the community. 
working with kids, prevention, education. It's so critical. If you're a parent watching this or a grandparent or have kids involved or a teacher, it's important to know the message we need to give to our kids. And that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This marijuana issue, Matt, has gotten to the point where our whole nation is crazy about legalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. They don't realize it's the strongest marijuana we've ever seen and that more kids are smoking pot than even drinking mm -hmm. and they're burning out and the parents think it's terrific that pot's going to be legal. Yeah. Now, that's a bad message. <laughs> that's a, a mixed message it's to our kids yeah. of what they get. And sure. they've gotten it that way with alcohol for years mm -hmm. and tobacco. Yep. Now, you've got to go in there and talk to kids. What do they tell you? When you're in there and you talk to those kids, what are they telling you? They don't believe that it's a drug. Mm. Uh, that's the most common thing. And when I, when I talk about the dangers of it, I hear kids laugh. I hear Snickers in the audience. Again, it's, it's, it is so normalized in our society nowadays, and I don't know if it's because it is becoming legal or if it's because they see the people in their families or, or the friends in, in their neighborhoods doing it so often or, or if it's because it's not as deadly as some of the other quote unquote harder drugs that we see out here nowadays killing people. But there is a, a common misconception amongst our young people that, that they think marijuana is, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's sad, it's really, really scary, especially because in an adolescent's brain or a teenager's brain, their brain is still developing until their the mid to late 20s. And to introduce a substance like that, and again, like you said, the, the marijuana nowadays is exponentially stronger than it was back in you know, the, the, the days when it was okay to smoke marijuana. But um, it's not your daddy's pot. It's not, it's not <laughs> the same stuff. It's not the same stuff. Yeah. There are so many chemicals in that that haven't even been studied yet. It hasn't even been around a long enough to have been studied to find out if there are, I mean, we're inhaling carbon monoxide when you burn something. That can't hardly be good for you. So uh, it's, it's just, it's extremely scary. But, you, but here you are hearing this from the kids. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the sense, hey, they don't believe that marijuana is dangerous. They don't believe there's anything wrong with it. And then you have to go in and try to educate mm -hmm. without preaching. Yeah. yeah. Is that the that, secret? That's the thing. You, again, you don't want to talk to them. Or you don't want to talk at them, I should say. Uh, you want to talk to them. And it's coming from a place where, listen, you don't, you don't have to believe me. Learn from my experience. Um, it's... it's uh, it's a difficult task and it takes a special person to go in there and to not only get on a level with, with young adults and be able to talk to them and, and retain their attention, but also to get them to believe you and to believe what you're saying is, is, is right when everybody else in, in society is telling, telling them that you're wrong. So, uh, you know, it's, it's... And that's tough for a kid. I mean, you think of these kids, they go to a party, everybody's vaping pot or drinking mm -hmm. or doing something else. Mm -hmm. And for the kid who doesn't want to do anything, that's hard. How do you fit in? Yeah, how do you fit in? It's difficult. And, and again, that's, that's my story, is I wanted approval. And I was willing to do things that I knew were wrong. And I think that everybody that does start smoking, they're afraid at first. Nobody just wants to go out there and has no fear or no questions about what they're doing, or even drinking alcohol, if that's the first drug of choice that someone tries, or smoking cigarettes. We know that those things are wrong. We know that if we get caught by police, there will be consequences. We know that if our families find out, they will be hurt, they'll be disappointed, they'll be upset. So, the, so this inherent uh, uh, right or wrong inside of us, it's there, but we're willing to do it anyway as, as kids as nowadays just to be accepted. And those, those, those actions we take to be accepted are turning into other things. It's, it's, um, it's not just marijuana nowadays, it's not just pills, it's not just cocaine. Drug dealers are putting other things in it and on it to be more addictive. So uh, again, I, I go back to what I always tell kids is no is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. Yeah. You don't need to justify why you don't want to do something to fit in. Yeah. Say no and walk away. And if your kids, are, your friends are making fun of you for, for making the right decision, you really need to reevaluate re who your friends are. Yeah, somehow it seems that we have to turn the tables on the message Mm -hmm. Because if you go to movies, TV, you see smoking again, mm -hmm. you see drinking again, things we didn't see for years mm -hmm. in our movies. And now it's weed is like a joke, you know, and all this. That's, you know, that's what these kids listen to. Yeah. And not only the kids, but even the young adults, 
millennials, the whole nine yards we're seeing. Sure. But a lot of this. So you also speak to parents. Mm -hmm. You also speak to faculties. I, I oh, would, yeah. to get the message out to them about signs and symptoms. Is that what you teach your parents? Of course, warning signs, symptoms, things to look for. It depends on what the audience would be. But again, communication and talking about this, whether it's pre, during, or post, talking about this, communication, communi communication, communication. There can't be enough communication about this. Um, you know, for, for, for parents, family members, the biggest thing that, that we like to talk about is you're not their friends. You don't need to make decisions to be their friends. If they're mad at you, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I see, I see parents nowadays so often just afraid to be a parent and to say no or to go in the phone that they're paying for and look what the text messages are saying or to be there and take the keys away or to stand at the door when they come home from prom and smell their breath. Things like that that I wish my, my, my parents would have done when I was a kid because maybe I wouldn't have gone down the road that I went down. But you're, you're, you're their parent, you're not their friend. Yeah, and that's, that's harder for the parent <laughs> yeah. to deal with because, you know, parents, you know, the b baby boomer generation and the next generation, nobody wants to pretend they're get, that they're getting old. So they think they're cool, they yeah. think they're hip. Yeah, they, they, absolutely. They, you know. And I get it. I mean, I, it's hard for me to tell my son that he can't play with his Pokemon cards, you right. know? So right. I, I can't imagine how, how hard it is for uh, parents nowadays to say right. that they can't go be with their friends to do what it is they, that yeah. they want to do the most. So, but you but, certainly seem to believe in, in, the, in the power of education and prevention mm -hmm. and teaching, giving these kids those skills to, to say no. As, and then if they need help, here you are with that. Absolutely. So that's, that's the best. We've been talking with Matt Bell, CEO Midwest Detox and Recovery Center. We've been putting numbers up as far as hotlines, to if you need help, Amidus Health is out there to give you a service, help you out the best that they can, whatever city you're in, just make a call, they'll help you, they'll tie you in. And, uh, and Matt, I can't thank you enough. Thank this you so much. This is great information. Thank we you can so talk much for all day it's been an honor. about this yeah. stuff. But it's a good start. Sure. We're going to have you back again because great. I love I'd the love kind it. of work that you're doing. Today on Straight Talk, we're talking about prevention, education, and treatment. And there's lots of programs out there. If you or someone you know, someone you care about has a problem with alcohol or drugs, make that first step. Make that call, get them some help. Help us out there. I wanna thank Matt, my guest. Thank you for watching Straight Talk, and we will see you next time.